So uh, today we're going to talk about um, working with Visual Studio for developing Java code. Uh, so just before we start, so that you know, uh, I work for Red Hat. I am uh, the project lead for several projects, including the Java language server and the hybrid mobile tooling. And then I've been doing a commuter with Eclipse for 17 years now. Um, include the started with the WTP server project, and I am a commenter on Apache Cordova, which I'm not doing anything active there. Yeah, I'm Fred. I'm uh, also working for Red Hat, and I work on developer tooli tooling, so based on Eclipse. Uh, I'm the project lead for M2E WTP, which is the integration for Java IE. Uh, I'm also a commuter on the M2E um, and the Eclipse JDTLS project, which we're going to talk about tonight. So, have you used Visual Studio Code? Do you like it? Anyone who didn't use it? Okay. You didn't use it, Max? <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> so, the thing about Visual Studio Code, so if you look at the, the, the current IDE space you, you, you have, or desktop IDE space, you have your full-blown IDEs like Eclipse, IntelliJ, someone was using NetBeans, uh, so they're all there. And then you have your text editors like Atom, Vim. Um, the, the thing about Visual Studio Code, it's, it actually labels itself as a coding editor rather than a text editor. So Visual Studio kind of falls between IDE and text editor, but it tries to remain in the text editor side more. Um, so for those who haven't looked into Visual Studio code before, I'm going to just do a quick demo of the feature so that you know, you get used to, you get the idea of what I mean by uh, a coding editor. So what I'll do is, oh, that's one of the, the, the uh, best features I think that, that Visual Studio Code has. It has a command line that you can use uh, to even start the, the Visual Studio Code in different modes. So if you want to just compare two files, you can just give the name of the two files and s say tell it to compare. It will just open it on, on the comparison view, for instance. And in here, I'm just opening a single Java file, and uh, this is a very s funny uh, case. Let me just go here and show you. Uh. So if you look at the, the folder, there is nothing there. It's just one single Java file that basically just sits there and there is no package structure or, anyth or anything. So let me just try to open that on Visual Studio Code. It opens up and the, uh, the, the interesting thing is when if you were using a full-blown IDE, you wouldn't be getting any Java functionality by opening this single file. It's like it doesn't know anything about the class path. It would complain about the, the, the packaging and so on and so forth. So on Visual Studio of Code for Java, what we are doing is we are creating this mode where you can just open up a file. Remember, this is, this is more of a text editor than a full ID. You can just open up a file, and then the Java functionality is there. So you can actually just hover over stuff. Um, if you can see it, or you can actually get some sort of code assist from what it can gather. So for instance, if you want to do like, let's try a system out, it will give you that assist. And if you want to get the class path uh, from JDK classes, the code assist, it's, it's going to be there. Um, um, and for instance, things like, Oh, 
you remember disabled you disabled my vim <laughs> um, yeah so for instance you can get the outline of the file you can you know take a quick look at the file and so on and so forth so all of this is just working for you without VS Code actually knowing anything about your project, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, documentation, so yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, it, it can even do a bit more uh, than this, but uh, so um, let me show you a bit, one more thing, just so if you want to go to the string class, you can just say that, oh, OK, I want to look at the screen class and what it is. And there is the, the whole, you can just browse to that so source code from here uh, and yeah, see the documentation and so on and so forth. So all of this is working. And as you have seen, I just typed in one, the name of the Java file. There is no class paths involved and nothing. Uh, and everything is just you know, for the basic single file editing case it works and funny enough uh, many of our users I think we have something like 77,000 now yeah around 77,000 active users of VS Code Java um, I th I'm gonna say half of them is just using this they, they don't really care about the class paths and so on and so forth so when, when they need to do a quick fix they, they just go in start it up the, the editor do the quick fix, come back, or just look at something. So. We also have um, syntax errors. Oh yeah, we, we do have, yeah, you can even get the syntax errors as well. Let me just break something here. Just, yep. So you get the full syntax errors. You won't get any of the, the uh, class path errors or, 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 or anything that, is related to that, but the Java syntax errors will be there. Well, we'll come back to more demos. So, so how do we do this? How does this work? Remember, I talked about being the project lead for the Java language server. So, basically, what we are using is something called a language server, a Java language server, and a language server is basically an abstraction between your language and your editor. So a language server is defined so that the, the editor doesn't need to know anything about the language. It just knows that, oh, show me, t give me the errors on that file. It just tells it that. that. And then language server just gives it a bunch of error objects. And the editor at that point does, has no idea about Java. So the flow basically just to give you an idea, the user just opens a document and then the editor just says to the language server, oh, the user just opened this document. And in that case, language server just says, oh, okay, I need to initialize my inner workings. In, in the case of Java, we look into any files that we can configure the class path from. So if you have like a palm XML, then we just say, oh, okay, I'll just look into this palm XML and initialize it so that I know what sort of class path this project needs. And then the user starts to edit the document and then we, the, the language server starts to is receive this did change uh, events. And the server at that point just says, oh, okay, there is some sort of a change happening and let me just calculate the diagnostics, the errors for this, if there are any syntax errors. And then if it finds one, it publishes those to the um, to the editor, and the editor just displays it. How the editor displays it, we don't know, we don't care on the server. We just say that, oh, okay, just take this. So the advantage is, now you have a single language tooling that you can use with Eclipse, you can use it with um, VS Code, you can use it on Vim, Eclipse J, Emacs, you know, and these are actual Java language server users right now. Oh, and Adam. I haven't seen a Sublime one. There's a work in progress. There is one? OK, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the language server, pro yeah. Does it mean it has to be connected to the network? 
No. It is a server, but it's a server in the sense that it's a client server architecture, so it's not so it's it doesn't server, no, it's not a remote, it's it, it it just runs locally as a process. Basically in our setup right now it just uses uh, uh, name pipes to communicate with the with the editor. The thing about language server protocol, it started by from uh, Visual Studio Code and moved into, well, basically when we jumped into, that's a funny story. We were looking for something like this at the same time and Microsoft came to us um, around the time that we uh, announced our, our collaboration on, on RHEL with uh, Microsoft. Uh, and they said that, would you like to, is this something interesting to you? And I was like, okay, yeah, this is exactly what we were working on. Let's do a demo. Uh, so we, we basically created the Java language server in a month or so and, and did that on, as a demo on Red Hat Summit. Red Hat Summit. Um, the good thing about the, the uh, protocol is it's totally open source. It's under MIT license. The protocol itself is under uh, Creative Commons, so it's the document part of it is under Creative Commons and the code is under MIT. And the protocol itself is based on JSON RPC, so it's pretty standard. So we talked about uh, JDTLS, so what does JDTLS actually use? Uh, it uses JDT, uh, the Java part of Eclipse. Uh, it uses a library called LSP4J, so it's the language server implementation in Java. Um, we use M2E uh, and the build chip uh, to provide Gradle support. And when it, when it loads, this is our page in Visual Studio Marketplace where you can get uh, language server for uh, VS Code for Java. Uh, it has something like 570,000 and something uh, downloads. It's one of the, I, I, I'd say, top 20 yeah. extensions for VS Code. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to hand it over to Fred, so that you can do the real demo. Uh, today we're going to see how to develop a Java application <coughs> with uh, VS Code. So it's a very complicated application. I'm going to open it with uh, the command line. <coughs> and basically what we have here is a Maven application, Maven-based application. It's a based on Spring Boot. Uh, it's, it's a demo app and basically displays and it's a CRUD app to create and display messages. So we have uh, so we have our Java code here in the uh, SRC main Java directory structure. We have resources, um, <coughs> static resources. Um, <coughs> web pages and whatnot. Um, so it's based it's based on on Maven. So we have the PomXML here. Uh, so we're gonna open now the uh, was the message controller that uh, Go came open earlier. And what she let's see what we have now. So now we have a full blown project. Uh, is open in VS Code. Uh, so because uh, the language server recognized that there's a POM XML at the root of the project, the whole project was configured with the proper class path. And now, uh, if I hover over uh, the different types on my uh, in my class, I can see all the Java doc. Um, all these uh, all these Java doc is coming from the sources that have been automatically downloaded. Uh, for all the dependencies of my project. 
I have, um, so I'm still able to uh, control click and navigate through um, all these classes. Uh, same thing as before. Uh, something we didn't show earlier, uh, if, you, if you open a type, um, let's say the shell from Nasorn, uh, this file, for instance, doesn't have uh, sources. The, the uh, JDK doesn't provide sources for Nasorn. So in that case, uh, we display a stub source with empty, uh, empty, empty methods, <coughs> but it gives you an idea of uh, the content of the file, how it's done. Uh, okay, so let's go back <coughs> to our controller. So we have, uh, let me check that. Um, we have um, errors uh, shown in the um, problems view. Uh, so if I click on them, uh, it will bring me to the uh, problematic file. Uh, in that case, uh, this, uh, these are unused imports. So you can see the light bulb here. If I click on it, I get some, uh, something called code actions. In Eclipse Lingo, it's called quick fixes. So I can organize imports to uh, remove everything. I got a nice stack trace, but ignore that. Pretend that it didn't happen. Um, so we have uh, uh, support for different different kind of uh, warnings and, and compilation errors. For instance, if I break this file, uh, I'm going to uh, change uh, something here. If I save it, you can see my problems here. Uh, problems view is instantly refreshed with a whole bunch of compilation errors. So this happens because Behind the scenes, we're using the JDT compiler, which is an incremental compiler. So every time we save one file, we don't have to rebuild everything by hand by calling a build command. Uh, saving the file, same as Eclipse, uh, the file is recompiled automatically, and all the errors are propagated in the, in the workspace. So I can, I can see that uh, in that message controller, the save method doesn't exist. So I could, um, if I wanted, uh, use a quick fix to create it, create that, that missing method here. Uh, it's been created with a weird uh, comment here, uh, but it's not really interesting. But so we have we, the uh, the extension provides uh, some code actions like. Uh, create missing uh, types, uh, missing declarations, uh, organize imports. All these uh, new code actions are actually uh, will be available in tomorrow's release um, because we're releasing tomorrow. Um, uh, and we'll get more and more of these um, as time goes by. Uh, it's actually all these code actions are have been provided by Microsoft, who uh, generously uh, uh, helped us with uh, the Java language server and the uh, Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, they have four, four people right now working to help us on the uh, server. So the interesting thing about Visual Studio Code is the Visual Studio Code is actually implemented by a team of people who implemented Eclipse. Uh, Eric Gama is the lead for Visual Studio Code, who was the lead for uh, Eclipse JDT back when he was working for IBM. So uh, what happened was they just contacted us and that, oh, we have some cycles that we can share with you. Would you like us to do some Java code? And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, so this is the, the cook assist actually, the code actions actually came out of that work. Okay, so <coughs> if I uh, fix my file and save it, all the problems are gone uh, because the, the, the class has been recompiled and everything is just instant. So I think it provides a really nice uh, user experience. Fred, show the code that doesn't exist on most Yes, so here we have uh, 
a link to three references. If I click on it, I can see oops, I can see my uh, that my message repository class is being um, referenced in message controller and DevOps application. And I can, uh, there's some really nice uh, feature here where uh, from that particular uh, small window, I can edit the target file. If I save it, I can see the, the same, um, the, the, the file has been actually modified here. So I don't want to save that. Um, <coughs> All right. So, what next? Uh, so we were um, we were w uh, looking at uh, compilation errors um, in real time. Uh, how about Maven support? So we have uh, we also support uh, some kind of uh, feedback from the for, from the Pum editor. Uh, it's really basic, but if you say if I add a version to my uh, dependency here uh, that doesn't exist. So let's say nine, nine, save the file. So the the server detected that the, the palm has been modified and asked me if I want to uh, trigger a synchronization of the uh, of the project um, <coughs> state. Um, we don't see much. The screen uh, the resolution is too small here. Um, so, <coughs> in that case, I just modified a, a dependency. Uh, simply saving the file is enough for me for for the server to update its um, its state. But if I was to change, for instance, the uh, the Java version to something like uh, one eight uh, one seven or nine. Um, I would have to explicitly tell the server to uh, update its its project configuration. So, in the case of dependencies, it's not it's not necessary. But um, for other more um, profound changes, you would want to either always change your uh, update your project configuration or or not. It depends on yes. No, this is uh, so we we had to do that because there's no equivalent uh, for um, automatically updating the gra a Gradle file, for instance. If you change a Gradle file um, in Eclipse, because we we're, we're pasting our, our tools on on the uh, Gradle support for Eclipse, there's no automatic uh, update of the the class path when you change your Gradle file. So we have to to provide a like a kind of a command that works for every tool, every build tool, so that we can uh, ma manually trigger the, this pr uh, configuration update. So it's at the protocol level there, limitation. So this is not, so uh, the update command it doesn't exist at the uh, language, ser language server protocol itself. It's a, an extension of the language server protocol that's implemented by uh, and defined by the Java language server. So. If if you if you're developing your own language server, you can define your own commands specific to your to your language. All right, so <coughs> um, we have uh, error reporting at the palm XML level. So the the artifact is missing here. Uh, so let's fix that here, um, and we can do some other changes like let's say I break my um, class path by by removing a dependency if I change my palm okay uh, never I should see some problems appear eventually uh, where in my tests there um, Dependencies changed. The uh, the test the test dependencies are, uh, are missing now. So I got a whole bunch of uh, compilation errors, uh, similar to the idea of uh, updating the the class path in in real time. So I can fix that, save it, 
and gone. So it's really uh, hack your hack, hack on your code, save it, and everything's updated uh, on the fly. So it's it's a really nice user experience. All right, so we have this this uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, we can uh, write some code. How do we run it? So um, let's do. Uh, this is a, a, a shortcut in, in VS Code. It's called Command Shift B to build the, the project. So at, at that point, uh, there's no build task defined. So I'm going to configure one. It's a Maven task. Um, and VS Code proposes a template for Maven tasks. Uh, it's, VS, it's coming from VS Code itself, not the Java extension. Um, and we're gonna, we have a build, a, a build command here, is build command equals true. So we're gonna just skip tests for this one. Oops. And we are gonna call the Maven wrapper. All right. So I save it, command shift B. And it builds, and it builds successfully. All right, so we can also run the tests with the test command. Uh, unfortunately, there's no um, shortcut assigned to, the, to this uh, build command, test command. So I can uh, go to the preferences, Keyboard shortcuts, search for tests, run the test task. All right, I'm going to add a, sh a command shift T, enter. It didn't work. Yes, it did. All right, uh, let's try that. So, command shift T is now running my tests. So I can build, I can run tests. Um, this is all nice. Uh, now I want to do the real deal and, and actually run my application. So at that point, I could create a new task to execute the Spring Boot run command. Um, it's not actually a good idea at that point because Spring Boot run is a long running command. And for some reason, VS Code just supports only one running task at, at any given time. So we don't want to run a task uh, within VS Code. So I'm going to use the terminal to, to run um, Maven W Spring Boot. Uh, Spring Boot. No, Spring Boot Run. All right, so <coughs> this uh, super app starts in 3.3 .3 seconds. Let's see how it looks. It's a super duper messages app. I uh, can create messages. Hello, T-Jug. What's up? Save it. And I needed to delete that before the demo. <laughs> 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 All right, not a problem. Let's go back. OK, so uh, I'm going to search for my type uh, messages, message. Uh, this one. All right, Con Command Shift O. It's uh, probably get message, get summary. Oh, um, it's not here, but there's a reference. Uh, all right, it's here. So I can delete that line, save the file, and okay, where is it? Where is it? I didn't save the controller. Or where is it? Ah, there it is. So the uh, the server restarted in 0.7 seconds. Um, 
Actually, Spring Boot provides a, a thing called DevTools, where whenever a, a something in a class pass change, changes, the, uh, the class loader for Spring Boot is thrown away and a new one is, is created. So you can uh, do your modifications in your workspace, save the file, and a new app will be restarted in, in less than one second. So let's see if I can modify that. All right, works. Okay, so um, what else can we can I show you? Um, all right, let's see if I can. I'm gonna create a new one. Uh, hello, it's Fred. Yes, code rocks. All right, everything still works. Um, so, because uh, Spring Boot uses uh, the, the Dev Tools, uh, it actually launches a, a Live Reload <coughs> server. So, I can enable Live Reload on my browser, and I could. And I can go and in my <coughs> editor, change some code, and we'll see what happens. So here, let's see. I'm going to loop over my messages. That's a message. Um, M messages. And I'm going to tweak my message. All right, so I have a quick assist, so um, a quick fix. So if you want to use the, the keyboard to, uh, to uh, call the, the code actions or quick fixes, uh, the, the shortcut is command dot. I'm going to create a tweak method. And in, that, in this case, I'm going to just change the uh, summary to summary. Uppercase to uppercase. There. Let's see if I change it. Magic. All right. Um, <coughs> How does the live reload work for the browser specifically? What is it? So the live reload is um, basically it's a server that that is running uh, l along the uh, Spring Boot application. And the browser is connected to that server. So whenever a change is, detec is detected, Spring Boot says, tells the, the uh, Live Reload server, hey, a change has been um, done. So the server will say, OK, everyone is connected to me. Please refresh. All right. So uh, the last thing I want to show you is um, Lombok support. Anyone uh, ever, ever used Lombok here? Yeah. All right. So basically, Lombok allows you to get rid of a whole bunch of um, crap in, in Java. <laughs> so uh, the idea is to, instead of uh, writing getters and setters and equals method and a whole bunch of bloat, uh, you let Lombok uh, generate all the bytecode for you. So. How, do, how does it work in VS Code Java? Um, so there are two things to do. One is to add Lombok to your to the class pass of your project, obviously. So I got it here. And the second thing to do is to tell the language server to use uh, to use Lombok because basically what we want to do is to uh, edit our files and the, the, uh, the editor needs to know that the bytecode has been modified. So for, for that reason, we need to modify the, uh, <coughs> the way the server is launched. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to open the preferences. Uh, so settings. Yeah, it's really not user friendly here. OK, so here in my workspace settings, um, I got this uh, preference 
So if you do, you, you, have, you also have in VS Code, you also have uh, uh, auto completion on, on uh, preference keys. So everything Java, you type Java, and you have the list of all the preferences available for the Java server. So in this case, I want to define the uh, JDTLS VM args. All right. So in that case, I'm going to uncomment this one. And the idea is to define the Java, the uh, Lombok jar as a Java agent. So uh, you need uh, actually two the Java agent and another one, the Xboot class path, two, uh, two arguments. So when I save my uh, <coughs> configuration, uh, the we detected that the class, the uh, the server needs to be restarted. So let's do that now. The server is starting uh, pretty fast. So let's go back to our message uh, class. So let's do something like uh, open problems. We're going to get rid of that. And all the rest. So now if I save my file, I should see some errors, all right, as expected. Oops. And now I just need to add a at <coughs> data annotation. You save it. And everything works still. OK, let's see if the app still runs. OK, let's create a new message. Still working. Um, that's about the extent of uh, what I wanted to show you. So with uh, VS Code Java, you can really do a lot with uh, a text editor on steroids and Java. And uh, I think the, uh, it gives you a really nice turnaround when it comes to developing um, microservices like applications, uh, specifically with Spring Boot. Um, back to you. Yeah, we can just show the. I think we do only have the roadmap just to show. All right. So what's next? Uh, what's next? Uh, Java debugger. Uh, this is a big piece. Uh, so we were talking earlier about uh, how Microsoft is helping us. Um, with four people working on this on the on the Java language server project, and they actually have a, a bunch of people in China working on the Java debugger. So this is coming. Um, we also need uh, and want to to do uh, add more refactoring. So we saw some good actions here, but we we need to add uh, to provide support for um, renaming classes. Uh, for instance, where you, you rename, the, rename the file and then all the, the type is changed, so you propagate all the changes to all the workspace. And finally, we want to expose at some point some formatting options. Um, so currently, we, if, you, if you really want a fine grain formatting um, tuning, you need to go in your project you explore. Um, so in your project, there's a settings dot settings uh, directory with GDT core prefs. Um, if you open this this project in Eclipse, you would see a whole bunch of uh, formatting options, uh, and you need you would need to to define the same options in in this uh, press file. So this is not really. Um, uh, obvious because you're modifying Eclipse files while you're using VS Code. So at some point, we probably need to expose some of these uh, formatting options uh, from the uh, uh, VS Code settings. All 
All right, so you just if you want, really want to, to use um, a test or Java support for Visual Studio Code, uh, just um, either open a Java file, and v Visual Studio Code will uh, recommend that you install our extension, or you can install it directly uh, from the, um, the command palette, typing x install Java. If you want to contribute to our projects, so we have two, two projects. We have the uh, Visual, Sco Visual Studio Code extension itself um, and the server. So the, the, the Visual Studio Code extension lives at Red Hat dot, uh, dash developer at, on GitHub. And the uh, language server is under the Eclipse umbrella. So either one of these uh, two repository can contribute pull requests, open bugs, um, uh, announcement requests. <coughs> Go ahead. So we'd love to spread uh, Java, Java language server usage uh, over other editors. So we know that there are some uh, work in progress with Atom, e Emacs, Vim, uh, Sublime Text. Um, if you can try their, their work in progress, go ahead. Tell us what you think. Uh, and if you want to test uh, that awesome demo, Code exists on uh, GitHub under the uh, Evricon, my username, uh, VS Code Java Demo. Uh, 